This video is going to show you how to remove the ionizer in an 04303 ion gun. The first step is to backfill your system with nitrogen, bring it up to air. Uh, you should have a procedure for that. Each system is different. But essentially you're going to turn off your ion pumps and your ion gauge filaments and anything that has a filament or high voltage. And then you're going to backfill the system with dry nitrogen. Then, first step is remove this flange. Uh, we're going to loosen all the screws on this top four and a half inch flange. These are five sixteenth twelve point bolts. So we're going to remove the bolts. Uh, be careful when you take the last bolt off because what we don't want to do is have the flange uh, fall off. We want to be very careful when we remove the flange because there's a little spacer that fits underneath the flange and takes up the space between the flange and the ceramic so that the argon gas that comes in from the leak valve gets forced directly into the ionizer. Okay, we've got the last bolt off. Now sometimes the flange will stick a little bit because of the compression on the gasket so you have to be careful when you pull it up. Okay, there we go careful. All right, there's the little washer and the spacer. Uh, you notice that we're wearing gloves, so you want to wear gloves when you remove this because uh, you don't want to get the oils from your fingers on these parts. Um, we also cleaned our screwdriver that we're going to use and our tweezers. We cleaned them up with some isopropanol before we, we um, are going to use them on this ion gun. Okay, so now that we've got the top off and we're back filled with nitrogen, we're actually purging nitrogen out. Okay, these three outside screws we're going to remove to, so that we can pull the ceramic out. So when you have this top flange off now, you should hear nitrogen hissing uh, out of the system. There's a little differential aperture. It's about a millimeter. So you've got a little positive flow. Normally, if you remove the ionizer, you should not have to bake the system as long as you keep a positive flow of nitrogen. Okay, we're removing the screws. He's just grabbing the screws. I usually use the tweezers myself just to make sure I'll, I'll loosen it up a little bit and then you get the tweezers. You don't want to drop the screw down into the gun. If you do, that can uh, sometimes be difficult to remove the screws. Okay, we're going to very carefully remove the ionizer straight out now that we've got those three screws off. It's kind of like that game when you were a kid. A lot of people played that little game operation where you, you were pulled the, the parts out and you couldn't touch the sides without getting shocked. Same thing. You don't want to touch the sides because otherwise uh, if the filament's uh, uh, damaged or, or, or sputtered through, you can, you can get particles that fall down inside of the gun. So you don't want that. This is the extractor assembly now that's exposed. If you have flakes that are inside of there, you're going to want to vacuum those out. Okay, here we are now unscrewing the cap off the shipping container for, from a rebuilt filament. The base is, uh, the ceramic is held to the base with two screws. We un undo those screws. And then we're going to insert that very, very carefully. There are three tabs on the base ceramic. And these little, they're like springs. And they make electrical contact to some other tabs that are inside of the gun that you'll see when you put it back in. And there are two guide posts that stick up from the extractor ceramic. So you have two holes in the ceramic of the base of, of the ionizer that are going to line up on those posts. And then these three spring clips are going to make electrical contact with the, the base, uh, the ceramic base that's, that's in the gun that you can't see in this picture. Now, often, as is the case right now, those clips won't line up perfectly because they're actually bent in a little bit so that, they, so that they're tight. So you have to use a screwdriver or tweezers and, and bend the clip out just a little tiny bit so it slides past the, the ceramic that's inside of the gun and then it will just, it'll just like the three fingers, they'll just slide right over but they're still spring loaded so they still make a good electrical contact. So you just want to make sure that you put the ceramic on the post, the two posts that it's going to slide down on and then you have to play with these spring clips a little bit until you get it to pop past the edge and then it'll, it'll push down. So here we go, he's got that adjusted. Um, it's, it's making good contact now. The, the springs are touching, the spring clips, and he's got the ceramic all the way down to the base. Um, there you go, he's got a little, that little bit of movement, okay. 
So now he's going to hold that down and reinstall those three screws and tighten it down. You don't want to use a whole lot of force. You basically want to use enough force so that the ceramic is held firmly to the base and maybe just a, a tad more, but uh, you don't want to wrench it enough to where you're going to break those screws off. So finger tight, just finger tight where you're just getting a little bit of resistance and then maybe another, you know, sixteenth of a turn, eighth of a turn, something like that. All right, once we get these three screws in, then we're going to replace that little spacer. Actually, um, we're also going to measure the resistance of the gun to make sure that we have good electrical continuity. So you can either put the spacer on first or you can check the electrical continuity first and, and then put the spacer on. So the reason we want to check the electrical continuity is because now that we have the system up to air we want to make absolutely sure that those spring clips are making a good contact because otherwise what can happen is you, if it just looks like it's making good contact and you don't actually measure it with an ohm meter uh, you may find that you pump the system down and bake it if you need to bake it and then uh, you, you go through uh, the next day get ready to, to fire up the ion gun and you find out that you, it doesn't work. You know, either you don't get any filament current, emission current, or you're not getting any pressure. So it's always easier to check the optics when you're up to air. So the new ionizer has been installed and now we're just going to check the pins. So uh, pin 1 and 2 are the filament, they connect to the filament, and uh, pin 4 connects to the extractor, which we didn't change, so that should be good, and pin 5 goes to the emission grid. Um, you don't even really need to get the manual out to measure this. You can just measure like we're doing here, just measure one pin uh, on the ionizer, make sure you have continuity to a pin on the ion gun, and then the next one, and then the next one. So you can see those two tabs and that, that wire with the ceramics, that's, that's the emission. But those three tabs that we're making contact, just make sure that each one of those tabs is making contact to a pin on the high voltage feed through. Okay, now we're going to install a new gasket. And we're going to very carefully put this flange back on. We don't want to knock that spacer off. We're going to center it, and then once you get it on, you want to rotate it a little bit to make sure that it's that the gasket is seated properly. If the gasket's seated, you can rotate the flange. It'll rotate, but it won't move off. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, put in those bolts, finger tight. See, once you get two bolts in, then you can let go of the flange. So, bolts go back in, we have a new gasket. Sometimes we like to use anti-seize on these bolts. It depends on, on if the bolts are very dry or they don't have any anti-seize on them at all, you, you're going to want to use that. You, normally there are, is some in the shop or you know wherever your tools are for these systems. Uh, usually there's some C5A, which works better than that moly disulfide because that moly stuff dries out after bakeouts. The C5A uh, lasts a long time, lasts years and years. Okay, so now we just start gradually, just put a little bit of uh, torque on these bolts just to get them started. What I prefer to do is, um, he's kind of doing a crisscross pattern here just to get them started. Once I get it started where you have just a little bit of pressure, I prefer to just go in a circle. So you just tighten it up a little bit more, and then go in a circle, the next one, the next one, the next one. That way you're kind of spiraling the torque down, so you're less likely to have a kink or a leak. If you do a crisscross pattern, there's a chance that you might over-tighten one side. Okay, so our company's name is rvdinstruments.com. We provide these ionizers. We provide electron gun filaments, the argon gas bottle refills, as well as complete ion gun systems, sputter ion gun packages. So visit us at rbdinstruments.com. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video.